parts are in. 100 nylon cable ties. So if I just open one of these, I think these were on sale at the time I bought them. So I added them to the cart to combine for the $10 free shipping choice thing. And I've been using a lot of cable ties recently, so I wanted to restock these smaller ones, especially if I'm doing things like working on putting projects into enclosures and there's going to be wires going to jacks or potentiometers. It may be useful to have a bunch of these small ones. A couple of modules. This says CD2399. I guess that's an equivalent or the same as the PT2399 audio echo processor. I'm guessing audio in here, out here, and I think it runs on 5 volts. And I guess this would be the delay time control. I've made a project with the 2399 before, so partly I wanted to see how these modules work. It's only a few dollars each. And also, if I want to actually commit some of these into a permanent audio setup, it might be cheaper and easier to just get some of these. So I'll want to look into how these work. These look like addressable LED strips. I know I ordered these months ago and I vaguely remember. So there's some round ones and some straight ones. And I wanted these to go with some of the other ones I have, just to have different options. I often use this. I have headers on here. I just put that in a breadboard. But sometimes it may be useful to have a smaller one. So I want to test these out. And I do have this little addressable LED interface here. I don't know if I have a remote control, but it does some built-in displays on PowerUp. I have a 5 volt barrel plug. So that lights up and does its thing. So now I just need to get some headers on these new ones to test those. Now I can put this in a breadboard if I want. And it has 5 volts ground, data in, data out. And it seems to be working. DIY electronic kit LED gyro. There's a bunch of small loose parts in here, but apparently this is some sort of a gyroscope with batteries and LEDs. So you assemble this and then you can spin it and see some sort of an LED pattern. So I'll see if the listing had any images of what to expect out of this. I'll have to put it together and see how it goes. If it actually works and doesn't just fall over when you try to spin it, I did have a reason I wanted to try building this, if it makes it into a future video. So maybe I'll work on this sometime soon. And this envelope is a little beefier. Three pieces of ISD1820 voice recording module and loudspeaker microphone. These modules do come with a small speaker, 8 ohm, half watt. And it looks like we have to put the connector on ourselves. And when that's done, that will plug into a speaker output. So the ISD1820 voice record module has an electric microphone on it, control headers, a couple of jumpers, and some buttons if this is not being controlled by some other circuit. We can hold down the record button while talking to record audio, and it's stored non-volatile. And we can play back edge or level triggered. So edge means momentary button push, and it will play back the recording. Level means we have to hold this down to continue playback. So I've never used one of these. I think it can run on 5 volts. So I guess I'll hold the record button and talk. This is a test of whether this works. Okay, I'll click the play momentary edge trigger button. This is a test of whether this works. Okay, so if I play level sensitive, it means it should only play while I'm holding. This is a test. This is, this is, 
Okay, so it starts at the beginning and only plays as long as you're holding the level trigger. This is a test of whether this works. The quality is not that great, but that's all it needs to be. The quality is not that great, but that's all it needs to be. So I hear a lot of background noise because of, I guess, low sampling rate and everything. And from what I read, there's a resistor on there that sets the sample rate and the record time. I think it can go from 8 or 10 seconds up to 20 seconds. But the longer you're enabling it to record, the lower the quality and sample rate. But I think if you put a potentiometer and you adjust this on the fly, you can change the pitch of the audio in playback. So that can be interesting if you hook up an Arduino or something to control or automate what's going on here. I got some ideas in mind. Now things start to get a little janky, but I just need it to hold itself together long enough to test. And on the speaker output of this chip, I think if we want to go single-ended because it's got dedicated plus and minus outputs from the chip itself to go straight to a speaker, I think we can just take one of those speaker outputs and ground to go to a regular signal and ground input. And we already now have a common ground between the two boards and the power supply, so I just need a signal from one of the speaker pins to the input. So I fumbled around a bit. I took the speaker off of this voice recorder and I connected it over to the 2399 echo circuit. And then the output of that is going to this amplifier. The quality is not that great, but that's all I need. So I think I'm going to look at the schematic of this specific echo board. Because when I made my delay circuit, I added some modifications and I was able to get more reverberation and even maybe slower, longer delay times. So I may want to mod this board, but for now, all of this is working as a unit and I have some plans for this kind of stuff in dedicated projects. So that will be coming up hopefully in the next couple of months. So. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make this possible.